Kamusta po kayong lahat? A very pleasant day to all of you. My name is uh, Butch Delisay. I'm a writer and professor here at the University of the Philippines. And I'll be your host for this episode of Cultura Sining at Ibapa, a project of TBUP of the University of the Philippines. Uh, today we have a very uh, interesting ep uh, episode devoted to publishing in the Philippines. And with me to co-host uh, the, the program is a poet and fellow professor at UP, Neil Garcia. But today he's going to be also a guest on the panel because he happens to be the director of the University of the Philippines Press. Uh, Neil Garcia. Yes, hello. Uh, good day to everyone. Uh, let's just make this a conversation. So I will be host, but also guest. <laughs> and uh, we can now begin, I think, by introducing or asking our guests to introduce themselves. No? Let's begin from the right. Um. Yes, I'm uh, John Jack Wigley, and I'm the director of the USD Publishing House. I'm Nanny Santa Romana Cruz. I'm the chair of the National Book Development Board. Hello, everybody. I'm Andrea Pachon Flores, GM of Hello, I'm Karina Bolasco, director of the Ateneo de Manila University Press. Yes. So, Neil Garcia, director of UP Press and host for today's episode on publishing. Um, I think we should begin by asking each of our guests to um, uh, share their views on uh, what the publishing industry in the Philippines is like and uh, whether uh, we have enough authors, uh, we have enough books, and enough readers. Okay, um, well, I'm going to talk about the UST Publishing House experience. I, I believe that parang there seems to be <laughs> more authors than readers. No, that's um, 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 an overstatement. Um, we publish all year round around 40 plus manuscripts. and. Um, some, some of them are literary, others are uh, scholarly, and um, so there is absolutely no shortage of writers. Um, but of course, the selling of the books is um, another matter, no? So um, uh, um, I, I think this is, kaya siguro pag-uusapan natin ito mamaya, no? We'll try to sort uh, the, the problems and the challenges and the issues facing the academic presses today. Um, but yes, I, I believe that there are writers um, in the Philippines. Um, and uh, in, in the UST, uh, uh, in UST we, um, we have um, books ranging from um, literary to scholarly. Uh, we've published a um, Dictionaryong Biswal, uh, which won, I think, um, um, a national award for this. And so some of them are groundbreaking. And, and, um, but then again, um, I think um, this problem of um, selling the book stems from the fact that, um, um, I don't know if this is um, a problem really, but the Philippines generally has um, this possesses what you call a uh, a reading culture because um, entertainment venues and spaces such as cinemas, concert halls, and malls are are what draw crowds. But when we talk about let's say books and readers, um, that's an ultimately uh, different problem, so. Okay, okay Jack, yes. you, you've mentioned about 12 issues. So many right issues, there. yeah. So Sorry. this is going to be a lot to unpack, and, uh, and I'm sure. <laughs> no, but I think, yeah, I think that uh, we, uh, uh, we can also ask the others yes, about their experience. Uh, our, our readers know, I mean, our listeners know what they're going to be listening to for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Yes. But before we get into those, the nitty gritty of those issues, and I know that, of course, uh, our, our other guests here have all their, uh, have a lot to say about these things. But let's go to the basic na, na question. Ano ba ang publishing? Kasi uh, sa, sa pag-iisip ng maraming tao, parang, parang printing lang yan, ano? parang kang gumagawa ng libro. What exactly does a publisher do? Yeah. Nanny, would you like to answer that? Nanny, by the way, is not a publisher herself, but she, she works for the National Book Development Board, which puts all of, brings all of these publishers together. Okay, the principal mandate of the National Book Development Board, which is today 22 years old, created by law 
to provide incentives for the publishing industry. So what do we do? We have a tax-free importation of paper. We have um, awards recognizing outstanding books. We have capacity building activities so that when our authors and publishers go overseas, we go beyond selling the book as com commodity, but we are now looking into selling rights of our books. So it's, it's a big um, industry to work with, to work for, considering the limited budget we have. Because publishing is not yet considered by the government a very critical industry. So we try everything and we are an attached agency of the Department of Education because the constituents of the department are supposed to be our principal readers, but that's another issue altogether. So what we try to do is promote a reading culture, promote readership, highlight our local authors, illustrators, designers, and publishers. Okay, uh, Nanny just gave us an overview of what the NBDB does, and that's kind of at the, at the back end of, of publishing. Pagtapos na lahat ng libro, nagpublish na lahat at ngayon pumapasok yung NBDB para tulungan yung mga publisher natin. Pero bali, again, balik muna tayo sandali doon sa una kong question. Ano ba talaga yung, ano ba talaga yung publishing? Ano ba yung trabaho ng, ng publisher? Kaya, well, I'm going to ask Drea, who was also with the NBDB, by the way, uh, as its former executive director no? uh, before she moved to Anvil. Uh, Drea, what, what do publishers do? Publishers do a lot of work, as I have recently just learned. Okay. <laughs> so, when a writer has a manuscript, okay. perhaps if it's acquired by an editor, the editor puts another layer of value to the manuscript, perhaps by structuring and fixing it, making sure that it is um, uh, ready for the reader. The publisher is also in charge of um, making sure that it is uh, might be what the reader wants in terms of, let's say, is this the proper size for the book? Is it the best cover for it to be uh, picked up by the particular market identified by, by both the publisher and the writer? Um, the publisher must be able to connect the book to the reader in terms of distribution, whether this is through brick and mortar or um, online. Uh, he must or she must have that um, network of things that might be able to do this, warehousing, logistics, operations. Um, she might have um, people around um, the publishing house that might also help the writer connect with other markets aside from the Okay. So, so a lot of work. Yes, sounds like it. So technically, you take care of, of editing, you of the layout and well, design, yes. of printing. You process manuscripts, raw manuscripts into books, and that's a lot of work because mm. you, it involves finessing the text. Also, um, for scholarly or academic presses, it involves cross uh, fact checking mm. and uh, indexing and mm. doing all sorts of other things. And then uh, you have to provide the right package for that text, in other, in other words, actual cover. Right, and that's also work because mm. you, you have studies and you you know you get input from the author, you get input from your ar artists, etc. And then you publish the book, right? And then you market the book, which is okay. probably the hardest part, as as Jack was distribution. saying. Distribution. Yes, because we do have a very uh, precarious distribution system in the Philippines, in the sense that you only have basically the monopoly of national bookstore as the the largest network to distribute books. Okay. Right. And as we know, year after year, the bookshelf, the, the shelf space for Filipiniana titles uh, in, in the NBS branches uh, is shrinking. And so we, we have to look for alternative sort of venues really to, to distribute okay. the books well, in. We'll go into those issues later. Yeah. But just, the basics yeah. Yeah. just to add to the publishing cycle, uh, we also establish the relationship with the author. So you sign a contract, which is very important because that's normally 
Uh, this is where most authors are not aware. They don't read the fine print. And so the publisher also, in a way, takes care. Or depending on what, how much the author gives the publisher, they also manage the copyright of the, of the manuscript and the author. Also, for after distribution, I think the end of the cycle is a kind of feedback system that you get back, uh, especially for textbooks, because you revise them. And even for some trade books, because there would be feedback from readers, and that goes back to the first stage in the cycle where you rewrite, revise, and then it goes again through the same long process. So, so basically, the publisher spends for the whole book. Yes. Yes. No? yes. yes. capitalista dito. Yes. So you're taking a financial risk in publishing yeah. material. Yeah, where, do you, where do you get your authors? How do you make that first? contact between publisher and author. San sila nang gagaling? Sila ba lumalapit sa inyo? They crawl Kaya out of the woodwork. Sa kanila? <laughs> oh. Oh. Commission works. You can, a publisher can commission, uh, for example, in textbook development. No? So you, you identify authors, uh, possible authors from different universities, and you commission the writing of textbooks. And there are also submissions. No? I think every publishing house has kind of submission guidelines that are up on their websites. Some, some presses have deadlines for submission per cycle, but for the UP Press and UST, it's, year, it's oh, all year yeah. long, yes. It's open uh, the whole year. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, because we are university presses, uh, naturally the, the manuscripts that we expect will be sourced from the academe. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be scholarly books uh, or academic titles, but we also get creative uh, titles, literary titles, and they're coming from everywhere, really. Sometimes uh, even overseas, you know, we get uh, submissions uh, from by uh, from Filipino Americans, you know, and uh, diasporic Filipinos mm -hmm. who have manuscripts. Uh, you, so you it's not. I, I agree with Jack. Uh, th there is uh, an abundance of manuscripts, right? Yeah, but. Yeah. We don't have a shortage of writers. Yes, no problem there. We do have a problem, I think, distributing the books and also locating readers. Uh, 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 we are competing, I think, with, an, with another kind of literacy, which is audiovisual. And I think the, uh, the educational system is aware of that, that our young people are moving away from print literacy towards audiovisual literacy. Sooner or later, probably instead of term papers, our students will submit videos. Right? Uh, they will produce their papers as videos because that's their literacy. But I think we shouldn't let go of print literacy or traditional literacy because without it, you really cannot produce videos. Right? Videos are premised on scripts, right? And good stories and things like that. So it is a problem. Okay, we'll talk about new media in a while. Uh, but you mentioned the term university press. Uh, Iba iba pa bang klaseng yung mga yung mga yung mga publishers? Uh, yeah. You know, there I, I've heard about I've heard about academic publishers, children's book, publishers, children's book publishers, yes. and then commercial, you know, the commercial trade book. publisher trade, trade book. books. Trade. Uh, can 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 you help me sort? sort out yeah. the, these uh, categories? Well, a university press is really uh, quite distinct because its mandate is to uh, promote uh, academic and scholarly knowledge. And so it's normally located in a university. It's okay. part of a university. And uh, for UP in particular, it's a special operation because we are subsidized by government, unlike, let's say, USD Press or Ateneo, the Manila Press. No? Uh, uh, in other words, our employees are actually, they get their salary from government, and mm -hmm. we don't uh, source their salary from the funds generated from the sales of our books. Okay. So our books, uh, the sales from our books go into basically subsidizing more books and also for, uh, goes into operational expenses for okay. the press. So that's quite specialized. Um, and I think, I don't know if, it's, if, if Jack or Karina will agree, that I think uh, the proper university press does not publish textbooks. Because uh, uh, university tit uh, academic titles, scholarly titles, are supposed to be of a, higher, of a different quality uh, from just textbooks. Uh, but I, 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 I think that just to be viable, because we are having a problem distributing the books we already published. No? We have a lot of books in our bodega, yes. and I'm sure it's the same for Ateneo and for UST, that just to be viable, I think some of us are considering publishing textbooks or are actually publishing textbooks yes, right I, now. I, I want to ask Ateneo and UST about that. Since, since you're, you, you, you come from private universities, are you expected to turn a profit? Yes. Uh. <laughs> That's my idea. I think at least not to drain the, 
the university budget by taking away from it and maybe the uh, that's my goal but of course the the university press people tell me they're not there for a profit no but in terms of uh, i wanted to say something about the textbooks because part of the mission is to contribute to nation building and we see textbooks as a major a major way uh, means to to influence education and many of the biggest text uh, publishers in the philippines are really textbook publishers Yes, um, actually, yeah, that's that's very true. No, Neil said that that we are subsidized by not really subsidized, but we 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 get our budget from from um, from the school, from the university itself. Um, but at the same time, we do not feel we should not feel that we are like the burden because we we have a way of of uh, returning. I mean, um, dapat self sufficient no ang 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 publishing yes. house uh, but i think the problem also lies in the on the one hand we feel that we should be a university press because all major universities should have university presses mm -hmm. that that adds to the prestige of of uh, the school but at at the uh, at the same time i also feel like um parang paano ba natin mabebenta yung mga libro hindi we oh. cannot just you know, churn yeah, manuscripts yeah. year in and year out. Uh, tapos wala, hindi naman babasahin. Um, so meron ding, um, and then of course, some of our, even faculty members from USD think oh. that the, the publishing house, the, the USD publishing house is just for printing. Yes. Ay, uh, nagpiprint ba kayo ng ganito? And oh. um, since we are a single campus, that's also mm. our advantage, I think, because we have a very, I mean, we have like 40,000 40, students. Yes. Yes. So if we're going to, let's say, uh, publish a, a textbook and, and, and hopefully get the support and the endorsement from the academic affairs, okay. alam namin sa UST pa lang, bebenta, bebenta na. na yung libro. Pero at the same time, nandun din yung feeling na, syempre ang university press, hindi lang siya dapat textbooks. But I agree also with Karina na, we should look into that also. Mm -hmm. Dapat mas may ngipin yata ang mga, um, ang, ang mga schools in, in in, in, in other words, what I'm saying is, um, na, nasa gitna kami, hindi na, gusto namin i-preserve yung prestige oh. ng university press, but at the same time, gusto rin namin kumita. Kaya, oh. And we feel that textbook writing is the fastest yeah. well, way to... My, my yeah, solution... Really exclusive yeah. naman of each other. I mean, yes, it's yes, about yeah. time we did but quality I think if you textbooks. But if you look at the example of uh, big university presses abroad, they, they, they have subsidiary presses to take care of textbook publishing because it does uh, subtract or take away from the prestige of the university press itself to start you know, publishing textbooks. So I think maybe that's the model I'm tr thinking of pursuing for UP Press. As it is, we're publishing books with textbook application uh, possibilities. Okay. So uh, that's how I sort of justify it. They're used as supplementary materials in, in college courses, etc. Like parasitology, we have a book on parasitology, which is the only one in the Philippines, medical parasitology specific to Philippine parasites, put together by the, a team of experts from UPPGH. Right? We cannot call it a textbook. It's actually a reference book or a supplementary material. They use it for their classes. So I think to venture into direct textbook publishing, talagang the book itself will be a textbook, uh, we need to have a subsidiary press to take care of that. And th the reason we can justify that is that you know we're in tertiary education and we're downstream, really, in, in terms of the educational system. We get products from secondary education and from primary education. If they come to us damaged, then we suffer. Okay. So how, how do we intervene? We intervene by, by, by producing or inter, uh, by making sure that the, the reading materials in, let's say, high school are of a, such a quality that more or less the, the, you know, the students will be better, right? Better served by that. And so when UP can justify it, like as being part of its mission to actually sort of like, you know, um, dabble in publishing textbooks for senior high school. Okay, so the basic question early muna. Ilang bang pamantasan sa Pilipinas at ilang bang may university press tayo dito? How, uh, how, how common is a university almost press? Almost all universities, almost every Philippine university has an office of publication. 
or publications office. But how many? Uh, but not many all of them have the term have something called a university press. Oh, so, so how I many? I think do that's you know? those two. No, I know uh, La Salle, F E U, uh, University of San Carlos. Okay. Uh, Bacolod, I think La Salle Bacolod. Yes. Ateneo de Naga. Ateneo de Naga, of course. Ateneo uh, de San Juanga. Uh, Ateneo San Carlos. Davao. Uh, Siliman University has. Siliman. So, San Agustin. So there's about a dozen. The big ones, ones. Yes, yeah. yeah. The major universities. Okay, so that's one side. That's one side of the publishing industry here, but. But Andrea is with yes. commercial publishing, but and so is, is she's. That, is that a bigger it's all about money for segment, her. Segment, actually. Stop. <laughs> Let's stop that. <laughs> Andrea, how, how do your operations differ from from these yeah. other presses? You know, okay, so we are a commercial publisher, but we are not purely a commercial publisher, as Explain. you know. Yes. So we do have a textbook division. We also have a trade division, but you know, all commercial. All but you know, the trade we have children. Yes, and but then what, what do trade books adult, uh, include? Trade Novels. books include the literary and non literary, non fiction and fiction. So we have book books. We have several imprints that dealt with, let's say, romance, which is not, though it's commercial, it's not really making the big box you probably expect from it. We are not the biggest trade publisher in the country. We're not. We're in the black, but really not that much, right? <laughs> You're in the gray. <laughs> it's sort of the gray, and I think we can be proud that we are primarily a mid-list publisher, which means we are in it for the long game. We are not going to take on. We would love books like that. We will not turn it down because it's going to help finance the other the books, other books yeah. Yeah. yeah no if you look at the anvil titles it's really quite quite eclectic so you have cookbooks you have self-help books you have all these other books but the, you have very great wonderful literary titles and uh, books in social science, etc. Yes, and we really wish it might be better. So they, in a way, it's like the Mother Lily regal films. You know, they have a lot of like formula things. <laughs> no, the background of that was when we. Well, I used yes, Karina used, yeah. to, oh, head used to, to head Anvil, Anvil publishing. Anvil. So because when Anvil started, it was really mandated or asked to produce a range of books that would sell in the bookstores. So at that time, everything uh, Filipino books were only academic and scholarly. But if you looked at the imported books, there were so many genres. So our job then at the beginning was to produce equivalent uh, titles in all these different genres in the bookstores, but are written by Filipino authors. That's why the range it's a, it's is The really range that, is really yeah, amazing. Really yeah. wide. And, and that brings up, uh, I think, a very interesting question. Uh, do Filipino books sell? At, and if they do, what is the best talaga? Ano gusto ng bilhin basahin ng mga what are the best-selling titles of USD Press, for example? So we can just well, talk about that. No, and then, no, yeah, we'll go down. Um, I think, um, kasi kami, no, sa, actually, maliit lang talaga ang kinikita ng mga academic presses. Uh, pero I think the books that sell sa amin is yung authors who have a cult following? I, I think that's one thing, no? Um, Sina with Eros, us, uh, yan, Sina Atalia. Eros Atalia, Sina Lourdes de Vera, oh. who were um, Tomasians also, Sina Joey de los Reyes. Mm -hmm. um, kumikita yung mga libro nila kasi meron silang, I mean, he, um, these authors are marketers also. They know okay. their market and they know how you to sell their sell books. You don't just sell books, you sell authors dapat, no? That's um, a new paradigm for us. Yes. Karamihan kasi sa mga authors na nagsasubmit sa amin sa UST, yeah. hindi... They just rely on the publishing house to market and distribute their works. And, and, and one of the problems is sometimes we encounter a manuscript which we know would really win awards, would yeah. really, it's a good manuscript, but we know probably will have the a limited market. yes mm. readership or no. What, what do you do in that case? Um, <laughs> that's a tricky question, but ako naman, ang ginagawa ko, I think it, it relies on the discretion then. No? I, 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 we have an editorial board. No? Okay. Um, uh, I usually uh, uh, tell this or present this to the editorial board, but of course the final decision has to come from me. And ako naman ang ginagawa ko, I know that this is a manuscript that is really worth publishing. Um, so ang ginagawa ko, I tried to balance it by accepting manuscripts then. Uh, ang feeling ko, um, Commercial. Meron siyang commercial appeal. Ngayon, ang, ang UST medyo commercial na kami kasi 
dati ang mandate namin is yung faith, illumined by reason, yung mga ganong Catholic, Pontifical University. So, may gan Pero ngayon, um, it's, it's a good thing that when, when I talk to the, 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 the priests are young, no? my bosses, so when I present them this case, medyo mas open na sila. Um, kaya yun, no? ang ginagawa ko to augment or probably... Uh, Kasi alam namin hindi to bibenta to para ma oo, para to just uh, make a buffer or at least you know my trade off so i i accept manuscripts that um, that um, are not really that top of the line but i know who has a wide uh, readership we don't have that pressure in UP press butch mm. because our mandate is very clearly to support uh, cultural literacy and to promote national culture and so as long as our our editorial process actually deemed the manuscript uh, worth publishing as long as it passes then we publish it we don't really care much about whether it has uh, a market value whether or it not. makes money or not yeah so you look at our bodega it's full of books i'm sure right but actually the <laughs> books are selling actually we are selling the books no but uh, I've noticed that s certain books move uh, uh, faster than others. Mm -hmm. so well, our, what kind of books are these? Uh, well, the best-selling titles of UP Press are still the folklore series of Damiana uh, Eugenio. Damiana Eugenio. Uh, yes, each book is very thick, so mahal na siya. And then like if you buy the whole set... how many copies has that sold? Oh my God, it's like I think 10th printing na kami, 11th printing. So it's already... Uh, each print run is 2,000 na ang authorized ko eh. Kasi okay. nauubos talaga siya eh. And you know the market for that would be diasporic Filipinos. Oh. They want to remember where they come from, and so they they look for these mga alamats and legends that they had been read to or li uh, heard when they were children, and so they buy the books. So that's those are the best-selling titles. But then next to those would be actually social science and literary titles. The literary titles, in particular, that sell are fiction titles. Really? Yes, uh, short stories and novels. English, po Filipino. Uh, more more English than Filipino, you know. but even the Filipino ones do sell if they are written by people like June Cruz Reyes, and yes. you mm -hmm. know they have cult followings or they're they have uh, recall value already. But poetry titles don't sell. They're just the, the simple truth of it all is that poetry books mm -hmm. take forever to sell. So we have still a, uh, some copies left of poetry titles that uh, were printed ten years ago. Bakit nga ba? And, 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 siguro for this, I'll ask, I'll ask Andrea because they're the closest to the market, I mean, to the open market out there. Uh, when Neil mentioned, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Dr. Eugenio's book has sold maybe 200,000 copies. More, in than. It, in it, more than. You should it. see the checks I sign. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, it's a reason for uh, joy, but it's also cause for worry because if Baliwalayan, kung titinan mo yung publishing abroad, and you know, they sell in the millions. Why don't we no. get to that stage where an author can sell a million copies of his or her book in a country of 100 million people? Because we're still a Most of them are we're, supposed to yeah, be Yeah, we're, we're still uh, residually uh, oral. Si si well, I think, you know, closest to that would be hmm. Walhat Mautista. Okay. Her, yes. She has four books yes. uh, that, that she has published, which I think earns a lot of money. Yeah. She can live off those four books. She can books. live off Bob those four Orr books. Bob Orr sold so much. Mm -hmm. Also because those books are adapted in school. Okay. Yeah. So that's a major so that's part. Key. Yes. That's so if key. you are not in school, you can be assured that your checks will be substantial. Well, what what mm -hmm. makes for a Filipino I me mean, for a Filipino bestseller? You know, how many thousands of copies does it take to be called a bestseller here? What kind of book? Uh, well, any yeah, kind it depends of book. on book, the book. If it's a cookbook, book. if it's a cookbook, you go to five thousand copies no, sold in a year. Julian, more. Julian, uh, Julian's kitchen. Uh, Wow. 13? We should all write cookbooks. 30. 3 0. Yeah. Okay. Um, our cookbooks do well. We mm -hmm. would probably um, the, um, pick up a cookbook author and probably cast them out to 500 to 1,000 copies. Mm -hmm. You can tell already if it's too niche or if it's mm -hmm. more general. Um, but obviously, she's a celebrity. Yes. So you can that's celebrity that's, on the yeah. cover. That's oh. ASL. She has a fantastic following. She is on trial media and uh, non traditional media. Um, but I think another aspect that, might, um, that we might look at here is uh, the profile of the Filipino leader. Yes, which is? <laughs> well, I think the Philippines is a very commercial market. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not what our literary writers might want, mm -hmm. but literary fiction, and not just here in the Philippines, but all over the world, mm -hmm. 
is really a, a niche market. It and is, if you yeah. know that, that a literary text is much more difficult to read yes. and demands more from the reader, mm-hmm. then, then you manage your But you do have these crossover books now and then, yes. which are acceptable both as literary titles and as Yes, popular. absolutely. Like yeah. Maybe smaller and smaller circles. Smaller and smaller circles is one uh, example. That that when I saw it, I knew it was something yeah, that would cross because markets. Because it's a genre book, also. Yes, but hey, but there are many of them, and not even books now. Right? I would mm. read everything and anything. Mm. Yeah. So yes, and you can find it. But well, for for UP Press, if uh, the book sells out, a thousand copies sell out in a year, we consider it the bestseller, and we reprint right away. Mm-hmm. If Actually, we, base we have it, a policy yeah. of uh, books that are sold out within five years, we can consider reprinting. If we base it on bookstore data, last I know, uh, was that Bob Ong for a time, 30 or 20 of his titles sold 500,000 copies. Can all you imagine? All I mean, uh, all together? Half all together million, yeah. okay. in one year. Also, uh, Miriam Santiago's uh, Stupid is Forever sold, an, sold more than half a million copies. That's an ABS-CBN title. And, and they've even followed it up with... Uh, Stupid is forever more, no? So, so that's it can go that that many that no, I mean, millions of copies. Uh, again, again for for our viewers to know, these manuscripts is submitted to us will not pass our review process. Yes, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but but I'd like I'd like to ask, uh, for example, uh, if I uh, how much do I get out of selling a book? Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. That's the industry yeah. rate. Okay. Yes, of the net sales, industry rate. Uh, is is that like uh, at par with the global standards? Yeah. I was asking Andrea that. Is it is it is it, fair? is it still fair? Is it fair? Yes, it is. Fifteen yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Pero mabibili mo siguro sa daliri mo dito yung talagang mga tao na talagang they make a living from their books. Yeah. Jesse was after for, for a while, I remember, oh, so. and Bob Ong certainly make, make, makes a living from yeah. the books, no? Now, fr- from your end of things, Nenny, uh, since, since you kind of oversee the whole industry, what do you think is, are the basic problems of Philippine publishing? Um, first of all, we had a readership survey, which is quite outdated now, you know, 2012. But we're preparing for a more comprehensive one this year. We, we were given the budget. In that survey, what were the books they wanted to buy? The Bible. We don't know if they really read the Bible or they're expected to say Bible, mm-hmm. top of their head. Okay. And then cookbooks, okay. and then humor books, mm-hmm. advice books. Okay. Those are the top constant sellers. Mm-hmm. Now, I think a basic problem we have, uh, Andrea alluded to it, is our distribution. Okay. We have good books, we have good authors, we have fairs where we highlight mm-hmm. award-winning books. Yes. If we were in the more uh, in the first world countries, every library would be required to buy. Classroom libraries would have it. So that is an essential factor. Here in the Philippines, please help me find our public libraries where I can check out books. We are very tight with our book budget, but I have to buy every book I want to read. Why is it so? During President uh, Ramos's time, he showed me a provision, some Republic Act, where there would be public libraries in the municipalities, which was wonderful. But when we do that, we forget that every year you have to build up the collection and replenish. For me, that's a very critical question. Don't we have a champion in government uh, who, who will uh, undertake the, the buying of, of, of good books for our public libraries? That's, we haven't found a constant champion. Mm-hmm. We've had champions who do it for Nino Aquino Reading Day. Okay. But the next election, he won't be there anymore. So we're 
so uh, in um, PBBY and BDB, we were saying, Karina had suggested this. When we choose communities, galing po ok is it, why don't we use public libraries as one of the criteria, along with the basketball courts and other wellness things? So, it's really hard, but when I talk to librarians, they say, but we have public libraries, mm -hmm. like Quezon City Public yes. Library is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it's because it's new, I want to visit it two years from now, and it's beautiful. I asked last month, how many books do you have? A thousand. That's not much. And that will be used, and you'll have to replenish. Right. I, maybe just my experience with the press is that, especially during the uh, International Book Fair, when all the publishers get to gather in one place, no, in MOA, and sell the books, uh, our sales come from these uh, municipal libraries, actually. They, because we are a government press, we are the UP, uh, part of the UP system, they are, many of them are actually required to buy our books. So we sell quite a uh, number of titles because of that. But I don't think it's uniform across all the municipalities of the country. Only probably the bigger cities no, will be sending uh, representatives over to buy the books. And I think they're mandated by their own governments, local governments, to actually do that. Now, there's a budget allocated to make sure these municipal libraries are supplied with new books every year. That's why we have to keep publishing new books because all, they will not get the old titles yes. anymore. They, they bought them already. So we have to have always new titles. Yeah. And like Jack, I think our, 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 our average uh, number of books per, new books per year was around 40 to 50 titles yes. a year. Yeah, and those are enough actually to, to bankroll the other books, mm -hmm. right? So long yes. as all these municipal libraries do their job okay. and buy the books. So we don't really have to try too hard, Jack, if only the law is being followed and these libraries exactly. buy the books. Mm -hmm. Because it's also hard, for example, in the only uh, in the national bookstores, they don't accept uh, books anymore, which were yeah. published like last year. I brought year, it two up actually. That it's a virtual monopoly. The national bookstore system, it's nationwide, and they you cannot just submit books to them and expect them to actually carry them in their branches. Uh, they select. Right, the of titles course. that they, they want, their business. and only their branches, of only course. certain branches, and so we have to look for alternative venues. Yes. Really. And, and the problem there is, for example, um, if it's um, if it's um, a high volume national bookstore mm -hmm. outlet, there they can only uh, uh, order, let's say, five to ten copies okay. uh, per title because they don't have a storage right, room right. to, yeah. you know. And then um, let's say if you have a friend a who time. buys, let's say, five or ten yes. books. Then, it's then gone. all the copies are gone, yes. and then they don't they don't take the time to call the yes to restock to, to restock, replenish. Yes. So that's that's really a problem. And you know, it's sad also because our authors expect to see their titles in national bookstores yes. on national bookstore shelves. That's their and gauge, they keep making right? us to uh, cool it. Why isn't my book there? It's mm -hmm. like, well, are you distributing my book or not? And we tell them only in specific branches. And yes, we distributed, but probably the three the three copies that they asked for got bought already. And so when you visited, you didn't see that the, the title anymore. I think Karina Actually, has a point for there. university presses, there are twenty one hundred university and college libraries. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. if there are only a thousand with social yes, sciences, and yeah, the rest are specialized. Yeah. Our 1,000 copies should, go. should be sold. Yeah, we, right. we theoretically should not warehouse anymore. Yes, so no. it's really reaching out to these libraries and maybe we're trying to see how we can do a standing order arrangement where yes. which is but done see, in all, other all the other countries. All these municipal oh, no. libraries have no, this budget is, these allocations. These are not municipal so. libraries. Oh, no. These are university and college School libraries. libraries. Yes. School libraries. Private. Mm. But it also includes the state, no? yes, the state yes, universities. Yes. But that's just a few of yes. the 2100. So we're trying to see a way of uh, in setting up a kind of standing order arrangement that if they trust the university press, every new title is automatically delivered to the library. Yeah. So they don't have to worry about keeping up with what's the latest that has come yes. out. And then we arrange a kind of payment uh, term no, for, for Maybe that. Maybe a package but, for them, Yeah, right? but you know, the municipal libraries and the public libraries will not want our books, Neil. They will want the books from, from uh, Anvil or the trade publishers, because this is where, this is for, these are for communities. 
All mm -hmm. kinds of people will go there. Young housewives will want to buy and read romances. Mm -hmm. Some will want to look at cookbooks. So I think the constitution of, the, of a collection for a public library is very different from a university and college uh, library. Maybe some like Maybe some ones, of our books will be history used, yes. that are history. No, but the, books then my that experience is that they do order. Like particularly uh, the bigger cities have been ordering books yeah. from us. But also because the, the, the acquisition system is very easy it's, it's between, yeah, yeah. between you and the government yes, yes. Uh, institutions. So I think we have it's an edge there. Well, speaking no. of promotions, uh, let, let me bring up another important question. How do we sell Philippine books abroad? Or Filipino authors? Or, Siguro, Andrea, uh, you have more experience here than, than most people uh, since you've been out there also as a literary agent. Uh, you, know what, you know what it's like out there. What's keeping Filipino books and Filipino authors from being better known overseas? Well, I think for the longest time, no one has really been selling Philippine authors abroad. Mm. Or maybe as effectively as in the U.S. Mm. If you pick up a particular author and you study the individual publishers and see what might fit mm -hmm. for a particular manuscript, who might be its market in the, in the world. So that was how I would be selling authors. Um, even in, An in Anvil, I wouldn't pick up my whole list. I would yes. pick up a few of the authors, authors mm -hmm. whom I feel might be able to cross more. So what does it take to cross borders? What, what, what exactly are you, would you be looking for in an author or a specific work? It should be a novel, shouldn't it? <laughs> it doesn't have to be a novel. As a matter of fact, I've sold a couple of nonfiction. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> tell us no, about it. What are those nonfiction titles? You look at the publisher, right? And you mm. see by the, the, the list that he's um, been doing the whole, um, throughout the years, what kinds of books he might be interested in. Mm. Uh, so th that's how I would approach um, selling. Uh, I, I am certainly limited by who, the people I know. So, and it's not, it's not just something that um, I know an editor and he's going to take a book from me. It doesn't really work that way. Um, so personal connections count? First, it's very personal. Yeah. Very personal. Very personal it yeah. has something to do with building relationships with not just people but with companies. Okay. So knowing that over the years what they want, building mm. your name as well, in that they will be able to trust you that you won't send them a dud. Okay. You know, because that that destroys that's your the reputation. Agent or your, the editor mm. when he sends out something that too many of those mm. um, yeah. will will mark you. So uh, are Filipino authors difficult to work with? A little bit. <laughs> Anong ano ka kulitan ng mga manunulat natin dito? Ayaw nila mag-revise. Ayaw mag-revise. Yeah. 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 Speaking nila, yun na yun. Yun na yun. Yeah. Particularly li literary authors, no? All sorts. Yeah. Kasi wala rin tayo mga literary editors um, na... Actually, yes, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you know. But when, when you get feedback, mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be someone who does a line-by-line -line edit. Yes. Oh. It can be a five-page feedback. Right? Okay. That goes through, let's say, the, the narrative arc. Mm -hmm. the, the pace, you know, the themes, the building of characters. No, it's not line by line. The characters mm -hmm. are flat, not brown. The language. Okay. How do you revise that? I mean, if, if you <laughs> start from scratch, <laughs> you, know, right? so you, you do the So we have a lot to learn if we want to cross over to the global market. But that's not the, it, with the university presses, because oh. we get two peer reviews, right. and it, they usually come back mm -hmm. with very detailed suggestions okay. for revision, and, the authors and they, they follow. That's it's why it takes longer. It yeah, takes but so I think uh, my experience with the UP oh. Press is that uh, literary manuscripts are either rejected or yeah. accepted yeah. entirely. Uh, scholarly manuscripts are mostly rejected. The few that are not rejected are actually conditionally approved, yeah. meaning they have to be revised. Yeah, which is why, an, usually, an which is why, editing. Butch, if you look at our 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 catalog, mm. uh, our our list of titles, we have more literary titles than scholarly ones. Yes, mm. because the scholarly books actually very few of them pass their review well, why process. Why is that? Why is that? Um, I think that uh, maybe we can bring up something not quite related to publishing, to the issue of publishing, but to the issue of lit literature itself in the country. We have national structures that support 
creative writing. We have the workshops. There, most of the big universities have their own workshops now. Mm. We have awards. Uh, we have the Palangka Awards. We don't have a similar support for academic or okay. scholarly writing. All right. So we need to sponsor. Someone has to think up, think of sponsoring national academic writing workshops where these scholars can actually finesse their manuscripts and turn them into publishable books. The research is probably okay, which is mm -hmm. what the feedback from the reviewers normally say, that the research part is okay, but the writing is okay. terrible. And it's the actual writing that needs some help. And so that's where I think we can sort of, uh, uh, there's room for improvement. But I also wanted to say, because one of the questions that we can ask is, where is in the, the book industry in the country, what are the strong points? Or where is it strong and where yes. is it weak? I think we've recognized that where it is strong is that there is this, uh, there is this sort of like abundance of talent, mm -hmm. a potential talent, like particularly for literary manuscripts. So many writers, right? We don't have a problem sourcing manuscripts, right? But we do have a problem editing. The okay. manuscripts and I think we don't have a good editorial culture in the sense that uh, particularly even for literary editing right uh, it should be all right for a writer to submit his manuscript for literary editing but most writers wouldn't want that they would just say I'll just give it to another publisher okay right and even the quality we don't have too many good literary editors yes. either Right, and we do in-house editing in UP Press, mm. but I, 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 only a couple of my editors are actually qualified to do literary editing. Okay. And when a manuscript requires that, actually, I sit down with the author and say, probably, can you know, it's not covered by the work anymore yes. of my editor. Probably, if you need to get him or get someone else, it's fine. But it's your own call. You source your own okay. funds to pay okay. your own editor, right? And we do need scholarly editing sometimes. Gonna then technical editing, right? So we need someone like another economist for an economics manuscript. Another economist who writes better can probably help you write, you know, finesse the the, the prose so that it okay. reads better. Uh, somebody give me a quick rundown, uh, maybe Drea, ebooks. What's going on? Oh, well, it has burst. <laughs> uh, I think um, the format of ebooks, or I did a facsimile yes. of the print for an enhanced book, yes. chooses the kind of content that would best mm -hmm. be effective okay. in that kind of format. So, are, are Pinoy's into ebooks? Uh, is it going anywhere? Yes, but not really. Not really. <laughs> the global trend yes, is that. Into it, yeah, but not really, they're not. They're okay. Not doing well. Okay. Um, also, maybe because of the, it's not the kind of thing that might be bought as an ebook. So, for the foreseeable future, we're still really mainly in print. 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 Okay. Print well, still. the ebook bubble has burst. I think that's what the the uh, watchers are telling us. So globally, it's not delivering the way it's supposed to, and so people the, the, the sales are going down, and 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 sales for the print Pretty books well. going up. Okay. So in fact, it's probably smart or good for us to actually consider ebook publishing or digital publishing as just a minor alternative business model. Okay. But our primary model should still be print publishing. Now, we are uh, running out of time, so again, this has been a wonderful conversation, <laughs> but I'd like to ask each of you for a few last words for our listeners. Getting with you, Jack. Um, message to our readers? Uh, sure. Or <laughs> to our viewers? Um, well, yeah, um, like I said, no, yeah, we, we've, we've also talked about yung e-ventures. Um, um, hindi pa siguro panahon. I don't know kung, uh, if we could catch up, but uh, I, I think um, uh, being ahead of, of a publishing house is, um, is very hard, especially if if you're swimming against the tide, diba? Um, we have mandates, but at the same time, we feel that this is our passion because we want to promote the reading culture of the Filipinos, um, even though um, we feel that um, our Filipiniana books are, um, are not uh, represented in commercial, publish, uh, commercial um, bookstores. Um, siguro ito rin yung calling namin, ano? Uh, calling ko, um, I have been in the connected with the USD publishing house for 10 years now and um, I still fight you know the same passion in uh, there's I hope that the future of uh, Philippine publishing is not bleak and we're doing our best to um, to to promote our um, books kasi kung hindi pa natin babasahin yung mga katulad natin mga Pilipinong mga nagsusulat 
wal, sino pa magbabasa sa atin, di ba? So, um, yun lang. I, I just hope that there will be more readers than authors um, and that um, the general public will also take a closer look in reading our books even though we're academic presses, I am. I belong to the academic press. I feel that it's high time that um, more Filipinos should know about what we do and what we publish. Okay. Salamat. Nene. Um, I can see that uh, the National Book Development Board has to be more aggressive. Go beyond Metro Manila. Okay. Also highlight the local literatures. We have so many languages. The DepEd needs teaching materials in mother tongue, in the different regional languages. And um, it, would, it would help if most of our activities went outside Metro Manila. And of course, my, my perpetual cry about the access to books. It really should be made available to everyone, not only those who can afford them. Salamat. Me? Uh, yes, Just go down the line. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think publishers are a partner of schools and of government in promoting literacy in the country. And literacy is the condition for the nation. Without literacy, we cannot really have empathy for each other. Uh, which, of course, you know, literacy fosters imagination. Imagination is the foundation of empathy. But I think that uh, other than just sourcing, publishing, and disseminating books, publishers should more and more consider uh, an, ex uh, an additional function, which is really to um, create or help create a social and a critical life for books. Because it's not enough that you actually produce the book or even put the book on a bookshelf to be bought. You also have to sponsor occasions for the books to, to live. And so with the UP Press, uh, we have sort of started partnering with such um, entities as the Institute of Creative Writing uh, and other such uh, bodies within the university uh, in sponsoring fora, uh, book forums, uh, symposia, in order for our books to be discussed and uh, appreciated by the academic community. So I think maybe that's an additional uh, function that uh, uh, traditionally publishers didn't have to do, but now I think we need to consider doing it. Thank you. Um, I guess it's for, I'd like to speak to the writers, um, given the question of the <coughs> writers. Um, I think Andrew would love to work with authors who feel that um, art is collaborative work. Mm -hmm. Um, when you are open to, to inputs on how to make the book better and I can guarantee that it would come out as a better product and I might emphasize product mm -hmm. capital P. Uh, the book is still a commodity after all mm -hmm. which has to reach a consumer and that is a reader and for us and for me in particular the reader is not an amorphous being. The reader is exact. Um, you can speak to the reader. We are trying to reach the reader in various ways through publicity and marketing and um, selling through rights and our uh, network. And so it's a very, it's, it's a, a reader is a being, it's a human, it's a human person. And so for every imprint that Anvil comes out with, we have identify the profile and if the author is willing to talk to that reader and help mm -hmm. us shape the manuscript so that it might be better received by the reader, I would love to work with that author. That. Thank you. Uh, I may have to go beyond the industry because I think that the problem, uh, the problem with books and reading uh, is the same for the problem for theater, local theater local visual arts, it's all throughout. And I think it's, it's, it's because of the way we teach the arts here. We're always like 
performance oriented. So the talented, we catch them and we train them, whether it's dance, music, writing, we have workshops for everybody, but we never do anything about the, uh, the rest of the class, like f the rest of the 40 who are not as talented or who are not talented at all. They're not being taught to be the audience for these artists, for these writers. Uh, we never discuss history, Philippine history of our visual arts, of our literary arts, uh, of our dance or music. We never expose our students to our local works, not only in literature, but when you take the usual art course, you will show them the Western, all the, the Picasso and everybody, but they, will, and they probably will be able to recognize a painting, but we'll never know any Filipino painter. So it's the same all throughout. So our, we have to develop also our own art history, music history, dance history, so that these schools can teach it. You know, that those are important. And uh, yeah, raise a generation or teach a generation how to appreciate our local works. Well, uh, thank you, Karina, and again, thank you to all our guests uh, today. Uh, this, these are, are the top guns of Philippine uh, publishing. Uh, ako po si Butchalisa, ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo para sa inyong pag, patuloy na pagtangkilik ng kultura, sining at iba pa mula sa TVUP. Maraming salamat po. <laughs>